Hi guys, I'm Lauren Vitali. On this episode of Lauren in the Kitchen, I want to show you what I like to call an actually good and creamy cauliflower mash. Now I know cauliflower is all the rage when it comes to um, basically be a substitution for potatoes and a lot of different starches. I love cauliflower in general, but if you try to make a cauliflower mash, in my opinion, it needs to be just as good, if not better, than mashed potatoes. So this recipe, I think, is just so, so fantastic. It does require a little bit of potato, which I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why I use it and whether or not you can leave it out or whatever. But for now, I just kind of want to show you the cauliflower and potato portion of this recipe. Now, this is just a large head of cauliflower, and as you can see, I've chopped the florets into pretty big chunks. Now, what I have here is one medium, it looks like a lot, but look, my bowl is strangely shaped. So, <laughs> it's just a medium russet potatoes that I have peeled and diced into small cubes. Now, if you look at the comparison, you're going to think, well, they're definitely not the same size. That's because cauliflower cooks a lot quicker than a potato. So, I'm going to leave the cauliflower in larger chunks and the potatoes in the small dice. That way, they cook at the same time, the same consistency at the end of the cooking time. How many times can I say times? Now, why I think it's crucial to add a little bit of potato, especially a russet potato because it's nice and starchy, it is going to give you really good texture. You can leave it out if you want to, but if you want to make the ultimate cauliflower mash, I definitely think one medium russet potato isn't going to hurt anybody. This makes enough for six to eight portions for a side dish. So really, when you think about it, you're not using two pounds of potatoes to make this cauliflower mash, but you can leave it out if you want to. The choice is yours. Now I've got a large pan here with some water. I'm going to add my potato and my cauliflower florets. Now I'm just going to turn this on, bring my water to a boil, and this is going to need to cook once it's up to a boil. I would say for about 10 to 12 minutes or so, or until the cauliflower is tender and the potatoes are nice and tender. Then drain them well and I show you the next really, really crucial step. All right, so once my uh, cauliflower and my potato mixture came to a boil, I just boiled it for exactly 10 minutes. By the way, I did add a pinch of salt to the water. I'm not sure if I mentioned that, so it is salted boiling water. And then I cooked them for 10 minutes, drained them. I literally just drained them. And then what you do is you put them back in the hot pot, turn the heat on. Come on, turn the heat on. And then what happens is, this, the, any excess water will get cooked away from the hot pot. While that's happening, that only takes about a, a minute or so, because what we're doing here is we're taking a lot of precautions to make sure that our puree, our mash, is not runny or thin or separates, and therefore you need to get rid of a lot of that moisture because cauliflower holds a lot of moisture. So then what I have here is a clean kitchen towel in a bowl. See, this is good. You can see there's no water anywhere. Perfect. This is what you do. You take another towel because I call it a mapine because the pot is hot. You take this mixture and you put it in here in your towel. I know it looks like we're, we're going overboard here, but you know what? When it comes to making a puree that's actually really good and creamy and smooth, it is worth it. And it's really, it's really nothing. You're not getting anything extra dirty except for one kitchen towel. And then I just kind of cover it like so, and I keep it in there. I keep them like this for about two minutes. That's all you need to do. And in two minutes, I'm going to show you how to put together the excellent mash. Now, what I have here for my ingredients, I'm going to make this simple. But I, you can add whatever you want. You can make this, you know, we can put some taco spices in here. You can put garlic. You can put anything you want, really. But I'm going to make it really simple. I've got cream cheese that's been softened at room temperature just a little bit, some sour cream, parmigiano, salt and pepper. That really is it. It's going to be so good. So I'm just going to let this sit for a few minutes and then we'll go ahead and mash it all up and it's going to be fabulous. All right, perfect. Now to that, I need to add my sour cream. Now don't add any milk to this. I know a lot of people are going to be tempted to add milk or cream or whatever. Don't. You don't want to add any additional liquid. That's why I just do sour cream, cream cheese, parmigiano reggiano, and some salt and pepper. A good grating of fresh parm always makes things better. I'm not going to add any additional salt to this because I just tasted my 
potato and it's perfectly salted from the water. But I do want black pepper. And now just using an immersion blender, you're going to just puree this until nice and smooth. And that's really it. Now that looks fantastic. Look at that. Thick enough for a spoon to stand in there. Now you know that if that was all watery and runny, you couldn't do that. And if that was all watery and runny, this mama don't want that. I want a thick puree of just deliciousness, creamy. That is what I'm looking for. And I really hope that you do try this recipe. And I'm really thinking ahead here, but holidays are coming. They'll be here before we know it. So if you are planning on doing mashed potatoes or you want like a lighter alternative, this would be a great one. And if you want to sprinkle some bacon and cheddar and green onions on top and make it a loaded cauliflower mash, I won't be mad at you. Not at all. All right, so I'm just going to serve myself some because I can't take it anymore. It looks so good. I'm pretty thrilled about this, actually, because I love anything mashed potato, anything mashed, anything pureed. I'm all about it. Mm. That is so good. I need more pepper though. That is so good. You'll never, ever, ever miss that it's not full-blown mashed potatoes. There's a time and a place for both. This is excellent. Go to LaraInTheKitchen.com to get the written recipe. I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me. And I will see you next time. Bye.